That looks good. Ah, beautiness. I, bu I bumped up the saturation a little bit. Hot tip. This is adult mac and cheese, which is, I suppose, my answer to the famed Annie's box mac and cheese, which I have a lot of respect for. Um, but there are times when it's not appropriate to make Annie's mac and cheese, or I would encourage you to do something that's almost as simple and infinitely more delicious. So this is a one pot pasta dish. I'm using shells. You could use any kind of small pasta shape or a long noodle as well. Um, the method all happens in one pot. It starts with butter. There is black pep. There's a little bit of milk, a lot of parm, and then pasta water. And that's how it all comes together. So this recipe uses Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, you could actually use any cheese that you want. It's kind of a riffable mac and cheese recipe. Um, but I like the flavor of aged parm. And I think that this is a little step up in the world from that packet of dehydrated milk powder and cheese that you find in your box. I'm gonna measure out five ounces of parm here and then grate it in this blender, which is a really easy way to very quickly grate a big piece of cheese. It doesn't work as well for softer cheeses, but things like parm or pecorino go in the blender and come out grated in just a second. So, I'm gonna blend on high. It would take quite a while to grate this much cheese with a microplane, um, and you want a finely grated Parmesan cheese in this case because you want it to all melt uh, evenly into the mac and cheese. So you don't want to use the coarse holes of your box grater. So either buy pre-grated cheese or throw it in your blender. Could you use a food processor? You could use a food processor. The little beads would be a little bit larger, but they would work just as well. I like the texture of the finely grated blender cheese, but you could use a food processor. Um, okay, so then one stick of butter, which I will cut into eight pieces, eight tablespoons. This is because you wanna be able to add the butter gradually and not all at once so that it emulsifies into a nice creamy sauce, but we'll see that in a second. It's cold butter, not room temperature. And then let's grate some black pep. If you don't already own a unicorn, which is this, and I highly recommend it because it's the best pepper grinder on the market. So two teaspoons of black pepper is a lot, but that's what gives this dish a little bit more interesting flavor. Um, it's sort of similar to a cacio e pepe, but there is no pecorino in this dish, only parmigiano, and there's the addition of milk, so we're not calling it cacio e pepe, we're calling it adult mac and cheese. Let's see where we're at. If you haven't learned how to grind pepper by this time in your life, this is a good time to start. All right, two teaspoons black pepper, and then one pound of shells. And I think we're ready to head over to the stove. First things first, three large handfuls of salt into our pasta water. When I say large, I mean large. A lot of that salt is gonna be left behind in the water, so don't freak out. This all comes together really quickly, but um, if you drop your pasta and cook it to al dente, which for these this size of shell, which I think is a 50, this is shell number 50 of Di Cecco. Um, these take 11 minutes to cook, and that's plenty of time to assemble the sauce. So I'm gonna drop, and then we'll come back over here for the rest. So one pound of shells going in. I'm just gonna give it a stir so none of them stick together. And then I'll set a timer for, let's say, 10 minutes because we want to start checking. We want to make sure that it doesn't get overcooked. Something that's interesting about this recipe is the way that the pepper is incorporated into the sauce. I'm going to add two of my eight tablespoons of butter to this Dutch oven and melt it. Instead of just adding this black pepper after I cook the mac and cheese, I'm going to bloom this black pepper in melted butter for a couple of minutes and that's gonna really intensify and bring out the flavor of it. 
We're not looking for browned butter here, just melted butter that's hot enough to bloom these spices. All right, we'll have pepper going in. You'll see that immediately it starts to turn darker and you're seeing a little bit of sizzling. That's what you're looking for. How long are you cooking this for? I can't remember. Oh, it says a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay, one cup of whole milk goes in right here to stop the butter from browning. And then this is the liquid into which you're going to emulsify the last six tablespoons of butter. And that'll create the base for your sauce. So we've got milky, buttery goodness in here. We will bring this to a simmer. See that the milk has just begun to simmer. This is when we start adding our butter one piece at a time and stirring, stirring, stirring until all the butter has been incorporated until we add the next piece. This is how you get a thick, creamy sauce versus a broken, oily one. A broken butter sauce is one where the butter has not emulsified with the liquid that you are adding it to, and so it'll look yellow and oily, uh, and it will have a different mouthfeel that's not as pleasant. All right, one down. Here goes the next. Okay, last piece. We're getting thick. It looks nice and creamy. We have emulsified. And our pasta is almost done. Okay, so if this part of the sauce is ready before the pasta, just turn it off and put a lid on to keep it warm. I lost my lid, this'll do. I'm gonna check on these shells. Crunchy. Needs a couple more minutes. To be honest, this isn't really your moment for super al dente pasta. It's mac and cheese. It can be a little overcooked. So before we drain the pasta, it's important to reserve some of that pasta cooking water, which is also known as liquid gold. So I have about two cups here that I'm gonna reserve and that's gonna help create our sauce. It is magical. Starchy pasta water is magical liquid gold. You're throwing away one of the most important ingredients in this recipe if you drain this pasta and forget about it. The pasta is ready, as it turns out, and I'm going to add it now to our butter sauce. Straight out of here, and then over medium heat, we're gonna stir, stir, stir to coat all of the shells. So, we're, st we're simmering again over here. I'm stirring to coat all of the shells in this buttery, milky, peppery stuff. And then I'm gonna work in batches here adding parm and pasta water alternating between the two until the sauce is really glossy and saucy and cheesy and coated. And we'll just keep an eye on things. So a couple handfuls of parm. Important to keep it just simmering as you do this and that'll help melt the cheese. You don't really want it boiling because it can get tough and stringy. Okay, I'll add a little water to thin it out. Oh baby, this looks good. More water. You don't have to use all of the pasta water, but better safe than sorry. So it's good to get yourself two cups of it. Okay, so we're starting to get a really nice creamy sauce in there. I think it needs more parm and it's not quite thick enough, so I'm going to keep adding. You could totally do this with other cheese. I think actually a lot of readers who have been making it have been swapping in different cheese uh, besides parm, or you could mix a couple of different cheeses. The method should work either way. So it's pretty riffable. Alright, that's the end of the cheese. We are looking pretty, pretty nice. See that burbling sauce? I mean, it looks like boxed mac and cheese, but does it taste like it? No. So I haven't added any salt to this, but the pasta water was seasoned and the parm's pretty salty, so I'm gonna give it a taste before I add any more. It only needs a tiny bit. One more bowl. Should we have a pasta party? Woohoo! Friday, guys. Okay, Emily and Chris are gonna come over and give me their thoughts. 
Let's see. Look at her. Glossy, like gloss or steam. I kind of want to take a picture. Sun's out, guns out. They should make adult mac and cheese um, air fresheners. Ew, that's disgusting. You don't like? I don't like. Do it for the gram, baby. Yeah. There you go. This is 100% parm? Yes. I know you, you don't like that? pecorino. I feel like you like it in like small, quantities. small quantities. If this were all pecorino, you'd be... It just does that thing where you get that like woolly, weird pecorino mouth. I hate yeah, the like woolly the mouth. mouth. The woolly mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Not only is it adult, but there's no bechamel involved here, so you don't have to worry about a flour, roux, milk, thickened sauce. And then it's never going into the oven, so we're not waiting 45 minutes for it to get hot and bubbly. It's all happening in 15 minutes on the stovetop. So you'd be just as well off eating this in your jammies in bed as you would be serving this for a crowd. Are craft singles an acceptable option? Craft singles, yeah. I'm going to say you do you in this case. If you're huge on craft singles, chop them up and throw them in.